Hello and welcome back. My name is Dr. Domico L. Cunningham, better known as Dr. Media. So in this video, I wanted to address a question that I received on my Instagram. So I got a question on Instagram about what type of hardware or what computer do I think is best for content creation when you're talking about special effects and 3D uh, and things of that nature. And yes, you heard correctly, I do have an Instagram and you can find me on Instagram at Dr. D Media PHX on Instagram. So you can find me at Dr. D Media PHX, all one word on Instagram. And on Instagram, you can actually see some of the other things that I am working on and things that I'm involved with or just have out there. Uh, so on my Instagram, I post a lot of pictures of hardware and, and things that, that we use for production and what I use for uh, content creation. And I actually posted the last workstation that I built because I just built a brand new Threadripper workstation. So I got a question from someone that follows me on Instagram about, you know, if they're going to spend money, what's the best system for them to buy or is it or is it better to build or, or whatever. Now, first of all, I know on this channel, I don't do computer bills. Uh, there, there's plenty of, of tech YouTubers out there that do um, computer bills, right? I've done one on this channel and I really didn't think it fit the format of what this channel is. This channel is really more of a knowledge exchange. So it's a knowledge exchange happening between me, between you know the digital mutants out there and other digital mutants to each other. So. I look at our community as being more of a knowledge exchange. So I, I don't think that I'm going to really ever get into the whole computer building uh, thing on this channel. But what I think I am going to start to do is look more at uh, components because a lot of us or people that, that, that look at this channel and, and other, other people that are looking, following me on social media, they have that question, right? So should I spend twelve hundred dollars on a brand new gtx 2080 ti for creating content and honestly i would say probably not <laughs> uh you'd be better off buying if you can afford it buying an actual if you are going to do more content creation than game playing i'll say it this way so if you want to do both if you want to play games and create content on the side then you can get your GTX 2080 Ti and be happy with it. I have one of those that's for gaming. I have a Radeon 7 that I use more in a professional capacity, but I use it for gaming as well. And I have a 1070 Ti that I use for gaming as well. Now for production, for high quality production stuff, I actually have this card that we have pictured here, which is the Radeon Pro Duo. The Radeon Pro Duo is at the time of the time that I bought it was a $900 card. So it was 900 bucks brand new. You can probably find it on eBay now for maybe five to $600, depending on where you find it. The other thing that's really great about these cards from Radeon is that they carry a seven year warranty. So out of the box, all of these, all of the professional Radeon cards carry a seven year warranty for, for that card. So, you know, you have that kind of built in, um, just peace of mind, realistically. The thing that's really powerful about this card is that if you remember, think back about to the RX 480s. So the RX 480s are probably about four or five years old at this point, but the RX the RX 480 rather um, was a Polaris based card. So they were eight gig variants, and the RX 480 became the RX 580. Um, they basically just did a few power limit tweaks um, and they rebranded that car. AMD is known for that, right? AMD is known for rebranding cards. And there also is this underlying technology of what's called fine wine with AMD drivers. As the drivers get more mature, you get more performance out of a car that might be two to three years old than and putting it on par with something that just came out in, in, some, in some cases. So anyway, this Radeon card is a Polaris based, it's basically a 480. But the cool thing about this card is that it's basically two 480s. So it is a it is a dual GPU card. So this card is two GPUs and it has 32 gigs of RAM, which is freaking awesome. So all of that RAM gives you a huge amount of space for 
for texture. To, so if you're working inside of Maya, you can be in Maya and, Maya and load up a, a model and have texture and everything else. And, you know, it's really pretty freaking awesome. Um, the other thing is, is that these cars run in Crossfire. And these, and, and also to bring up something that a couple of people have asked me, even when I, back when I was teaching, I had students that would always ask me, you know, why would I buy a professional grade card over a gaming card from the same company? So for NVIDIA, you have the GTX cards, or the, G the GeForce GTX cards, and then they also have their professional series, which are the Quadro cards. Same thing for AMD. AMD has their regular Radeon cards, and then they have their Radeon, now it's called Radeon Pro Duo. It used to be called Fire. They used to be the Fire GL cards from, uh, from AMD, or actually from ATI. Um, <clears throat> but you have two SKUs of cards. So if you think about it, it does make sense why the professional cards are more expensive because if you look at the gaming tier cards you might see you know three 1070 variant cards that are all from nvidia and they might be made by evga and there might be one that's like you know just a regular 1070 and then there's a super clock 1070 and then there's like a super overclocked uh 1070 or something of that nature the reason why that is is that when these cards are when all these cards are made they are the silicon is made all together so if a card passes the test that it's supposed to it will be a top bin card meaning that this meets all the expectations of the chip manufacturer so that means that nvidia gives it a stamp of approval that this this particular gpu is like the best that they could make now they end up with some that are not so close to being the best they can make so they sell those as a as a tear down or a second bin version of uh, GPUs and then so on and so forth. So the difference is when when, bar, when board partners buy those GPUs, they make different cards based off of the GPU. So they're they're basically you're spending more money for the top of the barrel, right? For the for the very first bend cards or GPUs rather. Same thing with professional grade cards, except in profession with the professional grade cards there is no second tier bin realistically it is this card was was created exactly in a way right because you still have cards that fall underneath these other cards but when you're looking at a top tier one of the top tier cards in the in the professional workspace that card is meant to get every bit of performance that that gpu die has on it so that's why you're paying you know 900 bucks for this radeon card for that instance and like i say you're getting two cards the other thing is like i said before you're getting 32 gigs of ram so instead of the eight gigs of ram that normally you would see on many consumer cards you're getting double that on this card so the closest thing that we have to that right now is the radeon 7 which had 16 gigs of hbm memory now this particular card did not have hbm um, it was only GD, I think it was um, GDDR5 was in this card, I believe. Not really too sure at this point. But it's a, it's a, it's a really beefy card for rendering um, and also just for content creation in general. So the other thing that you're paying for with the premium of, of professional graphics is a professional set of drivers. So these drivers have been tested by the companies such as Autodesk, um, SolidWorks, you know, um, ZBrush, so Pixel Logic rather. So these companies, they basically give their stamp of approval that this this software best uses their software. That the software for the or the drivers rather, these drivers from Radeon are the best drivers to work with their software and get the best performance out of the hardware that you're that you're purchasing with that particular software. Uh, so you're paying for that as well. You're paying for that stability and that quality control check. Um, the other thing with this card, like I say, it runs. I have this card. I have this card running in Crossfire, and it stays that way. And you can see that effectively, I have 46, 8, 4608 of stream processors. So that's t that's 2304 times two, and a 20 a 256 memory bus. And the total TDP on this card is 250 watts which I don't think is bad for two cards tied together, right? It's like 125 watts of GPU, realistically. Now there's no overclocking this card, there's none of that. Now if you're looking for this card to play games with, 
then don't don't buy this card. This card's two years old now. Don't buy it if you're looking for it for um, for that. If you're looking for it for that, then this is not the card for you. And the reason why I say that is because it's it's just not it's not tuned for playing games on it. Now, to be honest with you. Have I played games on this before? Yes, I've played games on this card and they work fine. They were, I'm running, you know, I'll run them at uh, 1440p at probably around 40 to 50 frames per second, which is not like killer, but it's playable, right? So it's it's playable that I can sit here and play it. The closest cards that come close to the, the cards that come close to this are the, as you can see here at the bottom, are the Vega Frontier Edition. The liquid cooled and the air cooled one they're basically the same card except one's liquid cooled and one's not uh those rock 400 uh, 4096 worth of stream processors which is great when you're trying to do computational stuff um this card falls like i say you can see it falls just below that but but it's still a kick butt card for content creation i'm actually looking at adding a second card because that would give me four gpus for render time and you might be like, well, Dr. Media, how are you going to use four GPUs um, at render time on this setup? Well, the other thing that AMD gave us is the Radeon Pro renderer. So Radeon Pro, let's go back up here. So Radeon Pro renderer is a free renderer. It's a free um, PBR, so photorealistic, so photo-based uh, ray tracing renderer. It is kick butt. It's free for every for every um, content creation platform. It, you can get it for Blender, for Maya, for Max, for SolidWorks, for PTC Creo, for Unreal. Actually, yeah, it runs in Unreal, and it actually helps with VR inside of Unreal, which is one of the major major reasons why I bought this card. But this this also runs in, um, and actually it doesn't. You don't have to have a plugin for it. But natively, if you use Cinema 4D, if you see, if you use Cinema 4D, it's natively built into Cinema 4D. If you use Moto, it's natively built into Moto. And you do not have to have an AMD card to take advantage of this GPU accelerated renderer. You can have an NVIDIA card and run it. It's probably not going to run as fast because, of course, you know. AMD is going to put more time into tweaking it for their hardware, but it is open source and it does run on any um, on on any uh, GPU. It can even run on Intel if you're running integrated graphics. It it, do, it doesn't care. It will run on gaming cards. It will run on professional cards. It, it doesn't matter. Like I say, it's completely free. One of the things that got me thinking about this is actually right now they're doing a pro render contest. So AMD is sponsoring a contest where you, you have to use the AMD pro renderer software to render out your scenes and you're able to enter this contest. And if you can see here are two examples that actually came out of the pro render uh, application. So the second part of this, I wanted to take a look at what pro render looks like inside of Maya. So I'm currently using Maya 2018 and I've literally just upgraded because um, I was using 2016 actually up until like a month ago because a lot of, and now you're gonna laugh at me, like you're still using 2016? Yeah, I mean, you could literally go back and use Maya 4.5. It, it's, it's kind of all the same. They just added things to it. Core functionality is still there. Um, but I was using 20, 2016 because I have a 3D mouse and that mouse doesn't have drivers for 2018. So excuse me if I fumble a little bit in some of the menus because they have moved things around and consolidated things here inside of. So I said all that to say if I'm, if I'm fumbling for things, then that's why because I'm just now getting, getting acclimated to the layout of 2018. So first thing I always do is get rid of this shelf. I don't like the shelf never have and why won't it let me get rid of it is well I guess we won't get rid of the shelf will it break out yeah it breaks out so we'll close it now all right so the pro renderer here like I say you you install it and when you do that you get this new menu 
so you get this pro render and uh, pro this Radeon pro render menu so you can run a you can start a production render you can export the scene you can import a scene all this all the scenes and everything are XML um, so extended markup language so if you look here if I go here to Radeon material library you'll see it opens up and they give you all all of these materials this is a this is a separate download but the materials can be or come with this which is pretty cool so you get all these materials like to start with so you can start playing with this stuff and you have already have a material library to use with pro render um, the other thing is that you have lights in here so you have a skylight node you have an IBL or image based lighting node you can also make an object emissive and I'll show you that because that's pretty freaking cool um, and you can also create IES lights which are uh, photometric lights and you can make photometric profiles or you can load photometric profiles from lighting manufacturers if you go to like Philips and you look deep down in their uh, kind of documentation for their lights they might have an IES profile if you download that IES profile you're able to use that exact light because that bulb was created based off of mathematics so the mathematics to create the bulb the look and the light and the feel of that bulb if you drop it into an IES node that light will will basically become that light and you also have a physical light node inside of here the other thing you have is you have the ability to convert so you can convert a V-Ray scene to a, to a RPR scene you can do that for Arnold and even Redshift so I don't use Redshift but I do use Arnold and V-Ray and since Arnold is the um, preferred renderer now in Max and Maya because Mental Ray was bought by NVIDIA a long time ago so I think Autodesk just kind of moved away Arnold is made it was made from um, from Sony so Sony Sony image works that's basically their renderer they they built it kind of around the time that um, cloudy with a chance of meatballs came out so th this is a really good Arnold is a really good renderer um, V-Ray is a great renderer. it's quick and it's great Arnold's pretty fast too but I still prefer the speed of V-Ray I need to get the newest version of V-Ray for 2018 um, but you get these materials so let's let's look at something I'm gonna make I'm just gonna make myself a little scene in here so let's make a cube let's scale that up and I'm gonna invert this so I'm gonna invert the, invert the normals so it's probably gonna be yep mesh display reverse face mode and let's blow that out so now I've made myself a little micro box basically all right and I'm gonna also no, I don't want to pin that I'm gonna make myself a sphere and I'm just gonna scale it up in size so this is the viewport that you're used to right this is viewport 2.0 it's been around for quite a while inside of Maya but if you look because I have the pro renderer installed I actually have a viewport for the pro render so if I click on that and give it a second you're now looking at a like rendered view so it's a it's a lower resolution rendered view but you are looking at the actual view so every time I move inside of Maya now it's it's rendering to the viewport right and give it a little bit of time to and you can see this area starting to clean itself up the longer it sits the it's if you've if you've ever used um, gosh I can't remember the name of that program I use it and it's the sad thing is that I use it all the time um, Keyshot so if you're familiar with using Keyshot Keyshot works kind of the same way it has a viewport that is that you can set to to show a preview of your rendered scene um, the difference is with Keyshot is that Keyshot is only CPU. It's it's only rendered by CPU, and as you'll see, this is rendered by GPU. So if I go here to to Radeon and then I go down to my settings, open up the settings, and I can look at my system, and you can see I've got preferences for final render, and then if I change to this, I've got viewport and thumbnail. So you can see right now these settings will not uh, you know affect current active viewports right so I have to change my viewport 
Um, so I could come in here and let's just go to like left and then go back to perspective. So now this is using both radions, so this one and the second radion card to render this in real time on this viewport. And I've got iteration set, I got my max uh, ray depth, the diffuse ray depth, the max ray, so you can get all of it. You can even do motion blur. I don't do motion blur in viewport because I mean, it kind of, kind of sucks when I'm looking at my scene. Um, if I were trying to set up my final scene, I would, I, sometimes I'll use that um, inside of here, inside of uh, Maya. But, so I've got that. So I've got the viewport. The viewport looks pretty cool. But right now we're going to set it back to viewport 2.0 just so I can quickly move and see things and everything else. But you can see my viewport's pretty, pretty quick and snappy. And it's not a very heavy scene. Uh, let's just go in here and look at what our poly counts are. So, whoop, let's go. And let's see if we can do heads up display. Where is poly count? So you can see my scene is not that heavy, right? I've got 404 faces, 768 triangles. Um, I can up this. Let's let's up this guy. Let's let's really let's really push them. So let's get no, let's get both of these. Let's overdrive this. Let's do. So now I've got like almost 80,000 in my scene and I'll duplicate this that's uh, 159,000 triangles let's duplicate it again and again So I'm just setting up a little scene while I'm doing all this, but you can see this hasn't slowed down in the least. It's still just as snappy as it was when we first started with this, all right? Everything's moving just fine with this. And this is more attributed to the GPU realistically than anything, because the GPU is what's drawing everything onto, onto screen, right? Because Right now, my CPU, it's working, but it's not working that hard. Because you got to remember, the GPU is having to render the scene that's inside of Maya, but also is having to render the um, interface. So the GUI is having me to be rendered that way, too. So if you look right now, I've got almost 400,000 triangles. And let's just add two more at a time. Let's speed this up a little bit. And I don't like them both being in that same space so let's just kind of move these guys out let's play with some scales in here let's just do that let's play with scales instead of a bunch of moving give some some difference to this stuff so I've got 557 yeah almost 600,000 polygons or triangles rather and it's just as fast as it was and always has been so let's go in here and see on the heads up display and I found you yep you can so frame rate so you can see in the corner down here my frame rate so you can see I'm 120 125 frames a second is basically what I'm getting back on on this and it, you know it changes when you move it around so those cards give you a lot of throughput for your for your viewport so the other thing that comes with this and I showed you this Radeon Pro the this library of materials I'll show you how to use those cuz they're they're not that intuitive to to know how to use to be honest with you so I'm gonna click on this 
Malibu Sunset Orange pearlescent, and I'm going to say import. When I import that, that basically brings it into Hypershade. So I'm going to split my view into two, and let's change this panel over here to Hypershade. So boop, 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 Hypershade. So there's my Hypershade panel. So there is the shader that it brought in. Now you'll look at this and you'll be like, well, Dr. Media, this looks nothing like this shader here. Well, in 2018, in, in my 2018, you actually now have this kind of preview window, window, window. you have this preview window that uh, can use a, a particular renderer to render out what your shader looks like. So right now it's on hardware. I need to change this to the Radeon Pro renderer and then you'll get to see it. So you can see now, boom, there it is. Your controls for this viewport are the same Maya controls for anything else. So the alt, you know, alt movement is the same thing. Um, you can see that they set up a, they give you a little small scene. This little small scene has a, has a reflection map in it and you can see how this particular shader interacts in real time. So that's rendering real time while the viewport's still rendering. You can change the environment. They do have environments in here you can change. Um, yeah, so you can you can go, so you can, yeah, you can change this guy out if you want to. So that's the only difference. You, you normally would make a texture by coming in here and just making a brand new, a brand new shader in here, not texture, but a shader. And you can see that there, you have the ability to make your own shaders as well. So if you look in here, there is a Radeon Pro um, divider folder in here for blend materials and you know doing PBR materials or whatever you want, or you can use the materials in the material library. The difference is, is that you have to open up the material library and then import that into Maya. They don't live inside of Maya natively. So I'm gonna drag this on to this guy. Yeah, let's see if we can assign to selection. So that's on him. Let's get, let's import this blue one because I like blue. Let's assign that one. And let's do some other things. Let's, let's actually do glass. So let's do a blue glass and a solid. They take a second to import, but they're just XML files. They don't, they're not, uh, they're not that bad. I thought I signed that, yeah. And so sign this. And so sign that. Let's go get some other materials. Let's get plastics. And I'm just doing this so we can see the difference between these materials as they render here inside of Maya. So let's assign that. And let's assign that. I think this is the only one back here that hasn't been assigned something. And we're just gonna put styrofoam on him because we don't care. Styrofoam. And then for the walls, let's go in here and let's see what they have for concretes. I like that. So boom. Get the box itself and assign that. So I'm going to zoom in on my scene. All right. I'm going to zoom in on my, I'm going to actually see uh, yeah. So boom, got my scene. And I'm gonna turn on the viewport renderer. So we're gonna switch over to the viewport renderer and give it a second. And you can see, boom, I'm seeing all of those materials, well those shaders rather, are showing up inside of the viewport and I can see what they really look like they they this is what they really are gonna look like as I uh, render these guys so 
let's change this back to 2.0 and I'm gonna come in here and let's just start a production render and this is gonna be using the GPU to render and you can see <laughs> it's already done like that that's 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 it it's done um, let's let's up our let's up our size for this let's go 3k square and let's render again we're gonna do this one-to-one -one. so we'll see what our render time is on this guy this is a lot larger Uh, about six seconds so we added maybe three more seconds by uh, going with the with that but you can see for a preliminary render that's pretty quick let's add let's add a let's add one of the lights from here so light um, ooh let's do this this one's actually pretty cool I'm just gonna grab this guy here and I'm going to actually no let's not let's not grab him let's duplicate him and pull this down and scale this down so I want to add a light to my scene so instead of adding a light I'm gonna make it emissive object so I'm gonna come here and let's go to lights and let's say we want to create and assign an emissive material to the selected object so boom this now has an emissive material on it let's give it a second there we go. So you'll see this ha this does have an emissive material on it. This RP this RPR material one is a regular material for uh, the renderer, and a, and type is set to emissive. And then color affects what type of light color is emitted from this emissive object. So if we turn it yellow, it will emit a yellow light. And you can also set the emission for watts per square meter. So if you know the square foot size or the square meter size of your space, you can set this appropriately. So now let's actually render this. Start a production render. And let's see what it comes back at. The last one was at 0 0.63. So I'm going to say that was like six seconds. This one's probably going to be a lot longer because now we have an actual light in the scene and no it's about the same but you can see it's not lighting up much of the scene because of how small that light is so let's increase that light size let's do 20 meters square and let's just render again yeah you don't have to go to that production you don't have to go to the to the radeon render uh, menu every time you want to render now that that renderer is active, you can just use the regular Maya rendering uh, button to just render, render out. Eh, still not bright enough. Still pretty. Just wanna, there we go. Just wanna see it all. And re-render this. Let's see what our emissive looks like. But it's really cool that you can you can now set an object to be emissive, but you can do that with other shaders uh, and other rendering engines, but they just make it really, really clean and quick inside of here. And actually, let's do that. And let's also now you do have to get the lights from in here. Let's also let's add a skylight node. Let's see. What it, let's just see what it looks like. So, but you can see the rendering from this is pretty quick. It, you, you know, it's not like your normal. You know, you're normally seeing like the square, square, square. Um, kind of come in you're really just seeing like boom scenes done 
um, and that's because everything is rendering on the GPU. Now I could add the CPU into the mix of rendering. Uh, that's still I still that's still kind of experimental. Uh, for at least it was last time I had the renderer installed because they they do update it, so you do want to stay up to date with any changes they've made to the to the renderer. But yeah, you can see, boom, I, I can see, starting to see my space, I can see this stuff. I can even see caustics happening. Um, I can see refraction happening, well, reflection happening and refraction on the objects that, are, that actually have refraction to them. And let's see, let's, intensity, let's turn this up to 0 0.8. It's pretty bright. And give me some more resolution gate. And yeah. Let's go to expand this thing. And then push it out. There we go. Now it would be a perfect time for, for depth of field, right? Because we've got. But I'm rendering this at 3K. So at 3K, it's taking seconds to render this this out. It's it's not like minutes and minutes. Now it's not a now to be to be fair, it's not a super complex um, scene but it's a fairly complex scene, right? And I mean, it's fairly complex based on geometry. The, the geometry of the scene is not, it's not simple. Um, it's not just like four or five polygons. It's, you know, we're rendering close to 600,000 triangles in the matter of like six, eight seconds, um, which is, it's, that's pretty beneficial, right? That's, that's that's pretty kick butt to see that rendering that quickly so hopefully you've learned about the radeon pro renderer and learned some stuff about that as well as why we use professional graphics cards and the other thing is if you if you choose to enter the contest i hope you do because i'm actually entering this year um well, i think this is the first year they did it i think no i think they did it last year too I'm entering the contest this year. I hope you all are entering as well. Uh, I think it's good. I think it's really cool that AMD is working on such great technology and just kind of giving that, giving it away. Like they're giving it away to the betterment of whoever wants to use it, right? So um, I would suggest, even if you're not an AMD fanboy, download the Pro Renderer. Um, if you are, if you're using it, download the Pro, Render, Pro Renderer and check it out because it is pretty badass, if I must say so. So anyway, until next time, my digital mutants. It is Doctor Media signing off. <laughs>